so this is in uh, this basically what it has done is uh, so apart from modeling the responsiveness of the player it is also modeling his skill or precision at picking the best strategy and at playing the best strategy right so if you are act again as i said because uh, the the, uh, the 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 sort of the main utility uh, or the main uh, uh, value of this sort of theory the way i see it is that it's not it's not uh, merely as a as a um, as a reasoning tool but rather as a tool for modeling when you have real data so if you have real data of say players that are play that are playing you know a pubg or something like that what is going to be the the skill with the with which they are going to play a particular a uh, particular pure strategy you want to model that based on past data this is the sort of model that will be very that would be very useful okay so this this lambda models the responsiveness of the player and also models the say the skill or precision of the player the precision with which he with which he plays uh, pure strategy okay so let's so i'll just write out now the more um the 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 general the, uh, theoretical concept here see essentially we can build up a quantile response equilibrium using any what anything what is any uh, what is called a quantile response function you can take a quantile response function and using that you just build you can build up a a, quant, a theory of quantile response so what is a quantile response function so quantile response function is one that satisfies the following so r it, it's firstly a function that takes your vector of payoffs and produces a mixed strategy so r ri will map a vector of payoffs for player i uh, uh, for player i and produce a mixed strategy for player i now rij there is the is the jth component of that mixed strategy mixed strategy is going to be a vector of um, for of probability probabilities for each pure strategy rij is the is the probability is the probability that it gives to the jth strategy okay so rij has to firstly be greater than 0 for every for every j okay so for every pure strategy gets some prob positive probability rij of vi uh, uh, as a, if you look at this as a function of vi which means it's the, it's a function of whatever you put, uh, is his uh, his vector of payoffs right is it's as a function of that it is continuously differentiable so it is a continuously differentiable as a function of this which means that if your payoff sl change slightly you should not have a big jump okay so remember uh, the, the the best response doesn't have this property if you have two uh, two pure strategies that are that are equally good and one of them becomes slightly worse then that slightly worse guy is gone from the uh, from the best response you know you, you it's it's a it's a sudden jump this conti so this continuous differentiability is is the way is this the smoothing that it does from uh, allow where it allow, makes some allowances for suboptimal strategies right that is the the essential nature of a quantile response as opposed to a best response okay so continue so this has to be continuously differentiable the other two properties are uh, are are uh, are important for it to be a, res a valid response to begin with see firstly it if you if you change vij slightly uh, means if you increase vij yeah if you change if you increase vij the probability with which you play the jth strategy would also have to increase so all things kept all other things kept constant if you change vij slightly if you increase vij slightly then the probability with which you play the jth pure strategy would uh, would have to increase right this is another uh, demand naturally because you want to play strategies that would give you high, uh, the ones that give higher utility are are being uh, have to be played with higher probability I, I, in fact and uh, the fourth one is actually saying exactly that that if vij is is more than vik then it has to be that the probability you assign to vi uh, to the jth strategy is more than the probability that you assign to the kth strategy okay so we, uh, which means that if the uh, the if if j, if uh, pure strategy j is more profitable than k then it must get a higher probability so a quantile response in that sense is not an just uh, is not anything arbitrary okay it has it's not just some model of response with uh, you know where a player can do whatever he wants he, he we have we, there is some logic to uh, sort of some method to the madness in the sense that it is responsive means that you increase the utility the the probability actually increases if you compare two different utilities 
then the one with a higher utility gets a higher probability. All of these nice properties are there in the quantal uh, in the in a quantal response function. Now, what you do is you come up with these response functions which satisfy these properties. Okay, and now from here in one step we'll be able to show that there is always a quantal response equilibrium. Okay, so what you do is you take now you take R as R one of v1 dot 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 rn of vn r of r of v of r of v is defined this way okay so you put together these responses now there is no question of it being a set or anything like that because the responses actually tells you the exact value that the probability should uh, r tells you the probability with which you are going to be playing uh, various pure strategies okay so this is this just defines for you the mixed strategies directly and remember the v's themselves are functions of of the probabilities so so what you have is you you have what you get is that these guys are themselves functions of what you of all these right so what your so a definition a quantal response equilibrium is a mixed strategy profile sigma star such that sigma star is a response to So, so, you put in sigma star to evaluate the uh, the expected utilities uh, and compute sigma star from the response function, you should get back sigma star. You com compute the response from the response function, that should be equal to sigma star. So, it is precisely the fixed, res fixed points type of property that we had for an Ash equilibrium. But now, under instead of the best response, you have the quantal response. Okay, yeah. R of V, sorry, what every term should uh, yeah, so V1 actually I should have been careful here. What is what V I actually I, let me write it here. V I is um, V I 1 till V I. I wrote V I J, right? So it's V I this. So this is the vector of of uh, expected payoffs for from his various pure strategies. So a quantal response equilibrium is then just uh, is is a is a mixed strategy that is preserved under this quantal response operation. So you give a give a mixed strategy, compute from there a quantal response to that mixed strategy. If you should get back the pure mixed strategy that you started with, and that is your quantal response equilibrium. Okay. So, so sigma star is a quantal response equilibrium if it is a quantal response to itself rather than being a best response to itself. Okay. So, now if you see R was defined to be continuous, right, then in that case consequent because R was continuous, you get we have that and because we have assuming finitely many pure strategies uh, and so on, then R composed with V is actually a continuous function. So, R composed with V just maps sigma to sigma, the set of mixed strategies to set of mixed strategies. Yeah, is a mixed strategy profile. Uh, it is R i is already taken to be uh, having image here, it is a mixed it is already a mixed strategy. R i is uh, belongs to sigma i. Okay, so, this is a map from here to here. It is uh, it is continuous and and sigma is closed convex and compact, closed convex and bounded. So, then again from Brouwer 
just like we did today uh, in the start of the class Brouwer's fixed point theorem implies that there exists a quantal response equilibrium for each quantal response function. So, you can see there is a little too much flexibility if you see because you can define whatever quantal response function you want and you will get a res quantal response equilibrium ok. Now, this too much flexibility is good uh, again when you are dealing with data sometimes you get erratic data and you you know you no matter how much you try you will not be able to fit the you know the demanding the very demanding uh, theory of games to it. But so, this kind of a, 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 a more a softer model like this can can uh, can fit in your data ok. So, another let us I will give end with one more example of a of a response function. So, you can do the following you can uh, consider any CDF like this ok consider a CDF this is a cumulative distribution function this is a CDF ok and I am going to assume that it this has some sort of a symmetry property. So, f of x ok should be equal to 1 minus f of minus x which means that if you look at uh, uh, something like this. So, because this is a CDF it means that it eventually you know as x tends to plus infinity you are going to get this is going to tend to 1 and x tends to minus infinity it is going to tend to 0 ok. This is that is that is the that is your f. Now, we by when I write this symmetry property what this basically is saying is that you know I should be able to if I take a if I take an x like this here this height here is f x. If I take the mirror image of this here this x which is minus x and I look at this height this height is 1 minus f of minus x right. So, then in that what it is basically saying is that this shaded height is equal to this shaded ok. So, there is a sort of a flip and a, and a rotation around that that is being the, that sort of symmetry is being assumed ok. Now, if you have if you take any such function then what you can do is I uh, will write this for our uh, um, uh, matching pennies game you can write out a quantal response in this kind of form you can write take sigma i 1 to be f of lambda u i 1 minus u u i 2 ok. So, player i plays his uh, his strategy 1 way with this probability f of this ok. Now, you in particular you can take take f x to be 1 by 1 plus e raise to minus x and this is something that all of you would have seen some time or the other if you have done some machine learning this is what would give you logistic regression right. So, you the the uh, what you get from here is you get a quantal you get a logit response quantal response given generated by the logit function ok which is and it looks like something like this you get e raised to minus lambda x yeah so that <laughs> so the exponential whenever it comes up many interesting things come up uh, it is the bold it, it is it is uh, par, it is part of the partition function So, you can now it turns out unfortunately because of the uh, the nature of this we cannot solve for uh, these sigmas in closed form, but you can uh, we can try to 
plot them and I will just show you what is interesting is how they uh, how they tend to look. So, I have uh, uh, just I can just draw this quickly and show you. So, on the on the uh, on the left on the x axis I have the probability that the column player plays h and on the right uh, y axis I have the probability that rho plays h. Okay. So, if you if this is 1 and this is being plotted for x equal to 1 by 10. Okay. So, if x is equal to 1 by 10 the, the this column guy plays x h remember with probability 1 by x plus 1. So, it uh, it is uh, so this becomes this is almost equal very close to 1. So, this so the and this is and the row player plays h with probability half. So, this this dot here is is your Nash equilibrium ok. So, this is 1 by x plus 1. Now, you can also do uh, plot the the logit response or the quantile response to uh, of each player as a function of the other guy's strategy. So, I can plot for example, the logit response of the row player uh, as a function of the player uh, as a function of what the what the column player is playing. So, I take the column players this thing uh, uh, so this as the independent variable and plot the row player strategy. So, it turns out it is something that it actually passes through the Nash equilibrium and it has this sort of form. So, this is the logit response of row player. to column player strategy, column players and I can similarly plot the logit response of the column player to the row player strategy and the place where they intersect is your quantile response or logit response equilibrium ok. So, here now I am taking uh, the domain of this one is going to be this this is the domain uh, the uh, the vertical axis is the domain for the green line the horizontal axis is the domain for the red line ok and the wherever they intersect this is now your logit qre and it uh, it is it is distinct for it turns out to be distinct from the nash equilibrium people have tried to fit in data and all that into this and they found that the data seems to be somewhere here ok. Now, it is it is anybody's guess about whether this is uh, you know uh, whether the it is closer to Nash or closer to uh, to uh, closer to logic, but the the uh, so the but the interesting thing is what happens as x changes. So, as x changes this figure changes uh, quite a bit and I will just quickly draw that as well as x when x if I if, if you change x to from 1 by 10 to say 9. So, then in that case then the firstly the Nash equilibrium shifts here. So, the Nash equilibrium will uh, shifts because uh, the one coordinate remains at 0 0.5, but the other coordinate has shifted. So, this is becomes your new this becomes the new Nash equilibrium and uh, the the these red and uh, the, the red and green curves actually shift. Uh, end up looking end up behaving something like this. This becomes the red curve and the green curve becomes something like this and this here this point here is is your new logic cure ok. So, the the good thing is because there is this you know. So, one of the dilemmas that we have uh, when we think about games uh, from the point of view of data sciences right is that what how do we interpret past data ok. Is the past data something that has is that only an exploration by the players just some trial and error trying to know what what the strategies are what the opponents capabilities are uh, you know what might the opponent be interested in etcetera. Is it just pure what we call exploration in reinforcement learning and so on is it just that or is the past data already having 
a strategic intent built into it. So, has the past data been arrived at with players playing with strategic knowledge and with strategic intent and strategic, uh, you know, emphasis. So, they, all these strategies that they have, all that they have played in the past is not exploratory only, it is actually intended as a strategic move by the players. Okay. So, if, so if you interpret the past, uh, past data in, uh, uh, in one way, if you think of it as pure exploration, then the opponent actually does not come into the picture. The opponent is just there as noise effectively. Whereas, if you think of the past data as being strategic, right, then the past data itself represents a game and what you are seeing over there is the, is the outcome of the game and so therefore, you, you do not know what the players could have otherwise done. You do not know the space of the, uh, of the game outside of what has actually come out as the outcome. So, what the quantal response actually in my view, what its, its main uh, sort of benefit that I have found in, uh, in my own work and so on is this, is that it gives you some, this kind of a soft in between model that, that is partly exploratory sort of models a little bit of imprecision, lack of skill or lack of experience on part of the players because by, by bringing in that factor lambda and so on. And at the same time, it 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 has some uh, intrinsic merit as a solution uh, as a solution idea. So it's not completely non-strategic either. So because if it is in between like this, it it lets you it gives you an opportunity to model this uh, the uh, you know the the game from the pre from its previous data from what has whatever you have seen uh, the players have done previously. Okay, so that's that's one of its utilities. Um, as as you know, as as you know, in if whenever you want to do any modeling exercise from data, this is this is uh, this is one direction to go. In. 